this to look at this is not working bummer it's a harbor freight jackhammer um oh i don't know it's maybe three three years old at this point and just sitting around it kind of died so let's let's go ahead and take it apart i kind of know it's either the brushes and there is also a spring that holds the brushes in contact with the armature and uh, uh, i know that it, that one it may be buggered up so we got no power let's go ahead and disconnect the electricity uh and let's see what's happening So now there it goes, boom, pops off. So this part. The way. Let's go ahead and loosen this nut. Let's go ahead and loosen this nut, see if we can get this thing away. What I'm doing is doing an observation. First, before you start tearing things apart, take a look and see if you can see a physical reason. Uh, is the wire disconnected? Uh, is the windings all burnt out? What I'm seeing here is I'm seeing, here's a spring and the spring applies pressure on the bushing uh, here's the bushing but what I noticed on the other side right here I see the holder but I don't see a spring and I don't know God knows what happened to that thing but we're gonna have to take this thing further apart and investigate it but there should be a spring here and applying pressure to this bushing so whether it fell off or whether it burnt off, I don't know. But I did have, you can kind of see it here, right there. I had to, this thing broke, and I actually soldered it, or welded it actually, uh, with a MIG welder. And because uh, these things are about 50 or 40 bucks at Harbor Freight, and I thought that was a little bit too much. Uh, this side, I have no earthly idea what happened to this spring because it's applying pressure to here. So let's take these two wires apart and see what that's about. There's the gear. Okay, here's the motor, the armature. The visual shows us that uh, this is the brush, and it's got a spring, and this spring applies pressure to the bushing or to the brush this side it does it does have a holder but it's missing the spring and when I look inside I found the spring in the motor casing now this is broken piece and it could be just time and heat I think what I'm going to try to do is bend this piece in such a way uh, that I can I can apply pressure onto this frame. Yeah, we're trying to. Uh, I try to bend this thing the way the other one is. It's got a little bend here, almost like a bow oh, about a seventy degree. And as soon as you start bending this steel it breaks. So we're going to see if we can heat it up with a torch and um, and then when it's soft then try to go ahead and bend it otherwise it's just going to break. Let's give it a try.
she warms up pretty good. Oh, yeah. So right here, it's got almost a 90 degree bend. why this stuff breaks I'm gonna get some water so this is the other one that I I ended up soldering it I mean it's not a great job actually I welded it um, but what we're gonna try to do is get this one to look like this thing with that little little bend on it so I've got this part now I'm gonna get this little reverse on it and we're gonna go this way so I'm going to try to get is this little return. I got this part, now I'm going to bend this very tip. So let's go ahead and put it back in the vise. Heat the very tip this time. And I'm going to bend it this way. This is the one we're trying to match. Okay, so now we're going to heat this whole thing up and try to get the same length as this spring. How are we going to do that? We're going to have to heat this up again, and we have to pull it out like this, so we get it about the same length. And so I would say that this section here, we're going to have to kind of straighten it out. So I would think I may want two pliers, one to hold this end, and then one to straighten it. I'm going to keep this thing close by to call, sort of give me a visual reference. And I'm probably going to have to heat this up Okay, I'm going to actually soak this in water to kind of really heat it. All right, so this is not bad. FYI, I took a nail and I flattened the end of it. I took a nail, I flattened it on the anvil so that it would hold itself in, in, in this notch. Okay, so here's the repair. This is the old one. I mean, they're both kind of foobarred because I welded that other piece on. But, you know, as you can see, that they're, they're reasonable. I'm sure I'm not going to have the same amount of spring action, but it does give me a chance to perhaps get some more life out of it, order one of these springs in case it takes a month or something to arrive. Uh, but, I, but then I can get down the road and do some more work. This is the brush, the carbon brush. 
this is the spring. The, the spring applies pressure to the brush so that it makes electrical contact with the Commodore. This is the armature, this is the Commodore, and so it applies enough pressure that it maintains contact so we got an electrical current. So how do we get that? So what I'm going to do is because I need some spring pressure, I can't just put it in like this, which would be a lot easier to put in. There won't be enough spring pressure. So we're going to install it on the thing, ramp it around, and we're going to slide it in this little groove. And there's a little notch along this side. And there, now we've got, we got contact with the brush. You can kind of see it. You can kind of see the, the carbon brush having contact here with the Commodore. You see that? Okay, so this side is done. Now we're going to have to shape the other spring to be sure that since we have reduced the amount of windings on this spring, it's probable that uh, this spring may have gr a greater pressure because we're using a smaller amount of coil, if you will. And so it's very possible that it may be wearing out these brushes sooner than normal. Uh, but again, I think this is kind of a, a general temporary fix. This will keep you going, keep, keep, keep work happening. Uh, you could order these springs from Harbor Freight. Again, they're pricey and it takes a while to get. So this, this will get you down the road, if you will, and get a little bit more life. And you may like it. You may just leave it just the way it is. Okay, taking a closer look at this spring, see how it's kind of coming up here. Instead of being flat on the paper, it, it kind of flares up. So I'm going to heat this up, and I'm going to adjust because within that holder, it kind of hits the top of it. So I want to make sure that this is... Uh, uh, as close to OEM shape, if you will, as possible. Let's go ahead and heat it up. Let's push this down. nice and flat. Now it's flat. Okay, here is the spring that we've re-engineered, if you will. You put it on, it's got a little holder here. The brush slides in. Now look at this brush. can only go in this way. That has to go in first and then this thing will screw on. Now before you put that in, you set the spring and we're going to have to take the spring and wrap it around because this spring creates the force that pushes the, the carbon brush against the Commodore, which is on the bottom of the armature. It's a little tricky here. On the side of this bro on the side of this holder, and then that's it. Now it's applying pressure. And as the brush continues to wear, okay, make sure that it's got good contact because uh, there it is. Now I can see. I've got the two springs in place. I'm very careful to make sure that the spring is not stuck on any of the casing and it's applying pressure on the carbon brush and making good contact here. I 
Suppose uh, Always a good idea to, you see gears, refresh it with a little bit of grease. Even here, this is a completed component. I'm going to put a little bit of grease on here too because this thing goes into a. Sh Well, let's, uh, we put the main thing together. Let's give it a test, make sure that everything is copacetic. I've got the power connected. Well, I think we're in business. So that's how you bypass having to pay for those expensive parts from Harbor Freight.